He just said on Instagram that you guys got the bait. We care more about the opponent. <laughs> Any word on no, we'll, Gamboa? We'll, they say some of such Gamboa. There's a lot of names that are out there. When we're ready to to uh, wrap that up, we will. Um, but again, um, star power. You know, that's what the sport needs. Um, if we, we go back in, in the days of guys, that's how you become a star. Fighting on platforms and with the, with the opportunity to um, cross over in the sport. And um, that's, our, that's what our plan is. Um, you know, the more attention is brought to the sport, the bigger the sport is. You know, and that's why we have, um, our vision is a uh, big picture. You, and oftentimes in this sport, most of the other entities, they think about what's going on right now. You know, and um, we're two, three years down the road. You know, I know what he's going to be doing. You know, he's 24 years old. And um, in short time, he's going to be the biggest star in the sport. Leonard, Speaking of, you just so said three years down the road. No, I, didn't say, I didn't say three years down the road, oh. meaning I'm saying three... As it relates to planning, oh, okay. as it relates to planning. Right, right, right. Well, I guess in those plans, will we see a pay-per-view play with Javante Davis? I feel pay-per-view opponents right now with Lisa Arlo Manchenko, Mikey that's Garcia. That's what you think. That's, that's what I think. I no, think. that's what. So I'm listen, saying, when, when I'm you, you when you when you become when you become a star, and the kind of star that we're going to make into Javante, all his fights are big fights, now, as you just saw in his last fight. You know, when you have that kind of star power, um, the ability to put asses in the seats, celebrities coming out, um, that wasn't just his first fight. I, and I heard some stuff out there about that. I mean, you go back to uh, when he fought on the co in um, Barclays. Uh, in, 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 no, no, back up January with Badu Jack. And Badu was in the main with... Um, with um, Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was though it was it was we had almost eleven thousand people in the building, and that's when he fought for Jaza. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we come right back. Uh, we go to England. He sells out Copper Box, uh, a little over ten thousand. Then in August, that's not can't really talk about that because that was May Mayweather uh, McGregor. Then um, we come back. We saw what he does at Barclays again. 14 those on um, him and AB4. 14 is some change. You, you, you look at the ovation he got on the come out, you know what it is. Tank is a ticket seller. He's a box office drawer, and he's gonna be the biggest star in the sport. And he'll be able to cross over and do lots of things that no other fighter will be able to do because he has a connection with what's going on in the world today. You talk about crossover. We saw Deontay on the Deontay Wilder on the Final Four. We've seen him on some of the late night talk shows. Are you guys going to make a push PR wise to get your fighters into those positions in the outside media? Then a bunch of guys will like sell well, well, and stuff I, to put them on some major programming. Um, as it relates to the Final Four, who's the first person to do that? He announced his contract on that day. I remember. Four. Floyd Mayweather. Okay, um, those are the kind of things when, what we call thinking outside the box, you know, um, and speaking on Deontay Wilder, all roads lead through to him, another big major star. Everything as it relates to the heavyweight division has got to come through Deontay. Um, what he's speaking is the truth. He's going to be the biggest guy that's there um, as it relates to when it comes to making money. Everybody got to come see him. He's the man. Have you spoke to him since this thing with Big Baby happened? No. No, I, I haven't. How do you think he feels about that? I, I can't really speak on what somebody else thinks. It's just um, it's an unfortunate uh, situation. I had a conversation a, a little earlier about it's unfortunate. You know, fuck off an opportunity like that. It's just unfortunate. It's a bad look for the sport. This is not good. The welterweight division is in the spotlight this weekend. We got Carson, California. We got Madison Square Garden. How do you see Amir Khan versus Terrence Crawford Saturday night? Uh, it's a good fight. Uh, 
great deal of respect for both fighters. Um, <laughs> should be a, a, a good win for Crawford. I think he, you know, I think he wins in convincing fashion. Leonard uh, Bob said last week that if Crawford were to get the victory against Khan, that his next call is going to be Al Heyman to get the, the Spence Crawford fight done. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> He said what? He said his his first call is going to be to Al Heyman to get the Spence Crawford. Fight. Okay. I guess what? Well, I was going to ask what's your reaction. You just start laughing. I really don't really have a reaction. Um, what does that mean? I mean, it, it's, it's like. Is that not the first step to getting closer for that fight? Well, I, I don't know. Earl has business to take care of right in front of him. I mean, do I have to name the, the guys that are right there? in his house, in his stable, that he can make a fight and he ain't got to call nobody and argue with them. We all know what the problem is. I ain't going to call it a problem because it's not a problem that I have. It's not a problem that Al has. That's their problem. They cannot deliver a big fight for Terrence Crawford or Lomacheco. That's what it is, period and point blank. So all of this masquerading around, talking about I'm going to do this and I'm going to, that's just Bob just doing Bob. And it's okay. He's a great promoter and he's made a, 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 a great living and built a, a, a great company by doing those kind of things. But that shit is old. This is, you know, that's prehistoric stuff. I mean, the yelling, screaming, ranting, raving, that shit don't mean nothing in 20, 2019. Nobody's even listening other than the 10 or 12 people that's right there in front of them. <laughs> Leonard, you know, I mean, the fighters have a voice. They have the platform, and they're very, very intelligent. So you can't even trick the, the public anymore with any of that nonsense. I mean, he knows what it is. He knows that a Crawford-Spence fight is not getting ready to happen anytime soon. Is it a business? Earl Spence has a plethora of options right in front of him, one by one by one. And I mean, we're going to see how all this shit shakes out at the end. You know, Danny feels as though he's the best Walter Wade. You know, he lost two close decisions, obviously, to Keith and to uh, Sean. Sean thinks he's the, the, the best guy that's out there. All this shit's getting ready to show up sooner than later. You know, if Terrence happens to be the last guy standing, I'm sure eventually that's what it comes down to, those two guys will fight. But in the immediate future, what's going on right now in 2019, Earl Spence has a number of options. He's a boss. You know, um, each and every one of the welterweights, they think they're the best. We soon gonna find out who is the best. You know, Terrence Crawford thinks he's the best, but the difference is Terrence don't have those options. You know, it's, and it's unfortunate, I feel bad for the kid. He's a nice guy, a great fighter, but it's just, you know, he's got a, he, it's just unfortunate that he's not going to be in any of these big fights in the immediate future. Because I know what the plans are for these guys that I just mentioned, and Manny Pacquiao in that mix too. Um, you know, these guys are going to be fighting each other. They And they're all big fights. I mean, we've, we've seen Keith on big platforms uh, doing six million, I mean, five million. 4.2 million, whether it be CBS or NBC. We've seen Earl Spence on um, a Fox, I think it was Fox. He did 6 million. You know, these are big platforms that the guys have options, and the fights are right in front of them. They don't have to argue with nobody about nothing. It's one phone call. They're talking to the same guy, and that's out. So, Mike, I guess my question is, you said he, he does have all these options, which I want to see all these options. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see these options by the end of the year? Because like you said, he's... Well, I wouldn't say the end of the year because it takes time to make fights. But I think this year you will see these guys mixing it up. I mean, you'll see Earl in a big fight with one of these guys well, with all the in, in his very next for. fight. With all you'll, the see, you just... you'll see Manny Pacquiao in a fight with somebody. You'll see Keith Thurman in a fight with somebody. You'll see Danny... Go if, Danny if Danny wins... You'll see him a big fight. If, where's Adrian at? If Adrian pulls off the upset, you're going to see him in the mix. Again, getting back to Granados. Granados was talking to me a while ago about fighting Keith Thurman. You know? With, with, with all these matchups, potential matchups, you could potentially have the welterweight in a stranglehold, the welterweight division in a stranglehold for four years, maybe even five years, just with those names by themselves if they fight two times a year. I wouldn't call it a stranglehold. I mean, it's just business. 
would it would it be a business strategy to lock Terrence Crawford out of that? No, nobody's looking to, to do any count. of that. I mean, he's a tremendous fighter who we all have a great deal of respect for. Right? So my, we, this is business. These are fights that we can make right away. And ain't got to argue with nobody <laughs> about nothing. And they're all a big fights. But is it Every the, last one of them. Don't, 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 don't get blinded by the screaming, the yelling, the ranting and raving. That's just because it is what it is. That shit is old. Nobody's even thinking about any of that. I mean, you look at these guys, the, all the guys that we're talking about, and you look at Errol Spence. He just come off of a big fight with Mikey Garcia. Is there something wrong with fighting in front of 47,000 people in Cowboy Stadium? Doing 400,000 homes, making a shitload of money? Raising your profile? Is anything wrong with that? In Mikey Garcia's case, okay, he dared to be great. He came up short. He's still a tremendous fighter who has countless options. And oh, by the way, he's his own boss. Do you honestly think that, you know, I heard somebody sent me something, said something about a conversation about that he was talking about making Mikey and Lomacheco. Okay, well. <laughs> What do you think Mikey got to say about that? You know, this is the same guy that you went down through the situation with, that he's, Mikey's his own boss. And I applaud him for that. See, the problem is now, it was a two-man show before. It was a two-man show before, and the fighters weren't knowledgeable enough about the information. Fighters are smart, and guess what? And guess who paid that way? Floyd Mayweather. He showed these fighters that not only can you be great fighters, but you make a shitload of money doing it. And the business model that he put out there, it doesn't necessarily work for everyone, okay? But it's a business model, and these fighters aspire to be great, but they also aspire to make a shitload of money. So these fighters looking at the options, and they say, what is the biggest options that I have out there on the biggest platforms and they ain't got to talk to nobody we're getting it done these guys are making record purses across the board each and every one of these fighters but again Floyd Mayweather paved that way these fighters need to thank Floyd Mayweather and a lot of them do is again because he changed the game he changed the entire dynamic of the game I mean when you, we, we can go back, we can look at, that's why I say, I know what I'm talking about when I say Javante Davis is going to be the biggest star in the entire sport. We can, we can flip this thing back, we can go, so we're in 19 now, let's go, let's go 12, 13 years back. If I would have sat here and told any of you guys that Floyd Mayweather would be the biggest star in all of sports, he would be the highest paid athlete in the entire sports. You'd have told me, get the hell out of here. Each and every one of you would have said that. But he believed. We believed. We came up with a game plan to make that happen. We had a great team. Me, Alan Floyd, Kelly Swanson, our lawyers, John Hornauer. We all had a vision. We all had a vision. You know, Floyd's immediate team. Everybody was working towards one goal. You know, and that was for him to be TBE, to, for him to be the biggest guy that's out there in the in, entire sports. And that happened. Not one year, not two years, not three years. Again, a boxer. So when they say that, oh, you can't do this and this is not happening, no, no don't tell me about none of that bullshit. I mean, it's like, I, we have promoted the biggest fights ever. It's a fact. And the same guy we're talking about, and two of those fights in the last five years, his fights have grossed over $1.2 billion in two fights. In two fights. Don't tell me nothing about making no fucking stars.
and we don't know what we're talking about. Is this pending announcement that he has today? Um, does it have Next to question. Yeah. <laughs> what was over there? Is he announcing yet? Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's Wednesday. To, it's, it's Wednesday, right? It's yeah. Wednesday, yeah. right? Oh. Any insight on that at all? Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Hey, Learn, do you think it's all psychology that the other companies are using to, by putting down PVC boxers? That's actually a great question. Um, that's not my MO. That's not my MO. I'm not, I'm not into trashing people. Anybody know me? I'm, I'm going to respond if you cut into any one of my guys. I'm going to respond. I'm going to come at you. And I'm going to come at you. And I'm going to come at your juggler. That's how we get down. Um, but I'm not into, don't do this. Don't buy this fight. Don't. I support all fighters when I say that. I mean, I'm in the sport. I'm a, I'm a fan. Same way I think Canelo's a great fighter. I think... Um, any of the other fight, I think Lomacheco's a great fighter. I think Crawford's a great fighter. But when you get to trash and other companies, I'm just, I'm just not with all that. I'm just not, because it's like where we're from, it's like you don't have to do that. Your shit's gonna shine if, if you're the cream of the crop and, and you're, you're, you're the best at what you do. Guess what? It's gonna be seen. You, you don't have to go and, and trash somebody else to get what you need to get done. Plan. What we do, we stay, we stay working, but we're working smarter and not harder now. Before, we was working our ass off around the clock, around the clock. We're working smarter now. We're outsmarting everybody, outsmarting the competition. That's all it comes down to. You're not going to outsmart us at every angle, every turn. We, we eat, sleep, and drink this shit all day. While they out at dinner parties and hanging out and doing all this other shit, we strategize. Why, why do you think it seems like more PVC fighters have their own promotional companies and it seems like, like other entities don't? Why is that not promoted on, on it, outside of PVC on, on, on a consistent basis? Well, it, it takes time if, you, if you're talking about in the internal fighters. I mean, because again, these, are, these fighters aspire to be great. They've seen Floyd set the blueprint that anything's possible. And it's not necessarily gonna work for every fighter. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and make that up and say that that's gonna work for every fighter, because that's not the case. But what he did is he he led by example and he showed you anything's possible. He was here, I can recall him saying, oh, I'm gonna be the first fighter to make a hundred million dollars. A lot of people laughed at him. They laughed at him. He didn't do that shit one time. He did it on more than one occasion. A couple hundred million dollars in a couple fights. You know, so anything's possible when you aspire to, to be great, when you aspire to think outside the box. And that's what we that's what we do differently. We think outside the box. Everybody thinks for right now, not everybody, but some of the guys out there think right now. And we, we you know, we two, three years down the road right now. Leonard, what's your uh, top three pound for Terrence Crawford. Canelo. Mm. I don't know who I would say next. Hmm. Should people have Usyk up there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm saying he's a he's a he's an excellent fighter. He's an excellent fighter. Yeah, okay. He's an excellent he's, a, he's, a, he's an excellent fighter. Well, I have a great deal of respect for him, but I don't think he's top three pound for pound. That's just again, this that, that's this, all this is. It's all subjective. You, you know what I mean? It's people's opinion. That shit right there. Again, that legacy is everything, but also. That paper is too. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, let them guys fight for all of that.